I think blind kayaking, I mean, it's like a different sport than a sighted person kayaking. The waves are pushing you all around. You're getting hammered. You're reacting so quickly to things. And without eyes, I just feel like it's like sensory overload. Eric is, uh, for me, one of the more impressive guys I've ever met. His ability to set something up as a goal that no one believes he can accomplish, yet he knows he can accomplish it. And it's not always immediate. You know, it takes sometimes many years for him to accomplish these goals. Eric Weyenmayer is considered one of the greatest blind athletes in the world. He has accomplished more as a blind person than most people accomplish in their entire lives. In 2001, at the age of 32, he became the first completely blind person to ever summit Mount Everest. Thank you. <laughs> an accomplishment no one has duplicated. He completed climbing the tallest peaks on all seven continents, known as the Seven Summits. He has scaled El Capitan in Yosemite, and ice climbed a 3,000 foot ice waterfall in the Himalayas. You know, I've also often debated this in my life. When I crossed the ladders in the Kumbu Icefall, people were like, oh, it must be easier for you because you can't see how far you have to drop. And I was like, you know, I always think in my mind, like what's scarier, falling into the unknown or falling into something you can see? I probably think not seeing it is scarier. Next year, he will tackle his most challenging feat yet, to kayak the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. You know, this is 10 times scarier than the scariest thing I've ever done, and I've done some scary things. Eric is training at the U.S. National Whitewater Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is where the U.S. Olympic kayaking team trains and the location of the largest man-made recirculating river in the world. There's about 12 million gallons in the system. Uh, we have seven 680 horsepower submersible pumps that pull all that water from the bottom pond up to the top pond. Those pumps will fill a, um, an Olympic training uh, pool about uh, every 19 seconds. This is Eric's third trip. He's come with his friend Rob Raker, who will be Eric's eyes on the Colorado River. My goal is to try to give him enough information that he is able to get down that rapid without hitting those obstacles and without ending up in those big whitewater holes. So we keep it down to very, very few Hold commands. Small left, yep, small down. right, small right, right, yeah. left, and hard right, and left. hard left. Um, the challenge for me is trying to give those commands at exactly the right moment. Sometimes you give it too early and he's off course. Uh, you give it too late, and oops, he's already hit the rock or whatever. I can, I can hear the waves. Uh, they're pretty distinct. Uh, but I can't tell how exactly I'm lined up very well, so... That's when the yells come in. Yeah, that's where the Hard guiding comes in. Because the Grand Canyon's whitewater can be so big, Eric and Rob need radios to communicate while running the rapids. Hey, Biggie, let's set up for the river uh, right. They've tried several systems. Turn right, hold that line. Last year, they tested a system on the Green River in Utah. Okay, Eric, big water coming up. It didn't work. Paddle hard. Paddle hard. Left. 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 Rob, oh, I can't hear you. No radio. No radio. You know, I'm going through a rapid and Rob's trying to talk to me and it's like, it's like Charlie Brown's teacher yelling at you. And you know, that was more panic than anything because I was like, did he say left? So those create even more anxiety than no radios. But ultimately we know if we're gonna do the Grand Canyon, it's such big water, it's so loud, we need to find something that works.
I think when I was younger, maybe I had more testosterone, you know, like somebody would be like, you should do that. And I'd go, yeah, I can. And I realized pretty quickly that that's it's not a good way to be motivated. It's way better, you know, I lecture myself a lot on this. Be motivated by positive things, by friends that are there to help you. Eric's story has made him world famous. He travels widely and gets handsomely paid to give motivational speeches around the globe. But he also wants to inspire young people and will often speak to schools for free about his life and accomplishments. I went blind when I was about almost 14 years old. I was a freshman in high school. I had this rare disease. They said you'd be blind by a teenager that there's no cure for this disease. It was like getting hit in the head with a baseball bat. What I was mostly afraid of was that, you know, blindness was like this brick wall that was in front of me. and I. I couldn't see how to get through it. When you're a kid and you're just full of the life that you want to do things and experience things, and there's a brick wall in front of you, and you're just pounding your head against it and you're not getting through, I was frustrated for a long time. But frustration became determination. And now, as Eric goes after perhaps the biggest challenge of his life, he has to reach even deeper into himself to conquer lingering fears and to find a way to come out the other end of the river stronger than he went in. The bad things that happened to me in my life, they're not going to be the things that stop me. They're going to be the things that propel me on to new places. And, and that's a hard attitude to embrace, especially you know when you've, you've just smacked into the side of a wall in a whitewater center and, you're, and you flipped over and you come up sputtering. You know? But ultimately, without that mindset, I think you just wind up camping out and being a spectator in life. <laughs>